In this video, we're going to be working on a Nintendo Switch motherboard that had a prior repair attempt. I did not know that until we disassembled the board, and a lot of things was done to this board. Let's take a look. Number one, USB-C port is out, and we have four missing pads. Four missing pads. Why do people do this? Why do people do this? The good thing is, three of the pads are ground. This pad is ground, this pad is ground, and this pad is ground. This is ground too, so we do not need to restore those pads, but we do have to restore this one. Let's test this component to make sure we have continuity here. And we do. Now the other major chip we want to check is this one here. And looks like work was done on this chip as well. Is this solder here? What is this? We're going to have to go over this chip just to make sure it's making a good connection. Let me test quick. No short. Okay, so we're going to assume this chip is good. Let's keep going with the inspection. We have to inspect everything on the board, make sure no components are missing. Because it looks like we have flux everywhere on the board, so we do not know where heat was applied onto the board. I have a donor board here next to me. Let's compare. And we do not have any missing components on this side of the board. Looks like work was done on this IC as well. Work was done on this IC as well. And we have a bridge here between those two components. Let me do a quick measurement here, make sure nothing is shorting out. I do not know if work was done on this chip or not. I do see signs of flux here. And what's going on over here? This chip was changed as well. Oh my god. What hasn't been changed on this board, honestly? Why did the guy mail this board over here? I mean, we're going to be charging the customer anyway, whether this board works or not. You can't send boards in like this and expect the board to be fixed. Okay. I'm going to start by doing some cleanup. Right now, I think the problem may be related to the USB-C port. I do not know if the person who mailed it here tried another USB-C port, and maybe it did not work. That's why he mailed it here. But the guy changed every other chip on the board. This one, this one, this one, and possibly this one. Right now, we do not have a short anywhere on the board on any of the major ICs. So we're going to proceed with fixing this area here, the USB-C port.
I just realized the camera was not running. Good thing I did not do much work on here yet. All I did was scratch this pad here so we can solder a wire and restore this torn pad. We do not need to do this, we do not need to do this, and we do not need to do the other one on the top left because these are ground pins. We do have other ground pins on the socket, so they're not needed. Let's go ahead and solder a wire here so we can restore the pad. Just like that. I'm using the non-enameled wire. A lot of people are asking, do we have the non-enameled? They were out of stock. We just got them back in stock again, so they will be posted on the website soon. The difference between enameled and non-enameled is enameled, you can think of it like an insulated wire. It has a coat over the wire. So you must heat up the wire to remove the coat before it solders on to whatever connection you want to solder it onto. Whereas the non-enameled, as soon as you hit the soldering iron onto the wire, it's going to solder because you do not need to worry about melting or removing the coat that's on the wire. So uh, when do you use enameled? For example, there's a video I did on a PS4 HDMI port replacement. The pads were all torn off the board. So I had to restore every single pad on the board. And I had a lot of wires going all over the place. Wires were overlapping. If it wasn't for enameled wire, then the wire would have shorted out with other wires. So in that case, we use enameled wires. So you use it anytime you do not want the wire to make a connection with anything else on the board. Right now, I'm using a non-enameled wire because we do want this wire to make a connection with the USB-C port when we solder it on. So we have to use a non-enameled one. You have to have both enameled and non-enameled. Their use depends on the situation. Okay, so we restored this pad. And maybe what we can do is we can add a tiny bit of solder mask on the bottom here. So we can secure this wire and so that it doesn't move. Just a tiny bit from the bottom here. We do not want to do it from the middle because we want the middle to make a connection with the pins on the USB-C port. Just a tiny bit on the bottom here. Not too much. Just like that. Now I'm going to prep the pads. We're going to apply solder onto those pads. And we're going to reflow the connector down in place. When we solder the USB-C port, we cannot see those pads. We pre-apply solder onto them now. We heat up the board and we reflow the connector down in place. So it makes a good connection with those pads. So we have to pre-apply solder. Tiny bridge over here, no problem. And maybe we should thin the wire just a tiny bit. Just like that. Now we can solder a new USB-C connector. See, the connector has a top row and a bottom row. The bottom one is hidden. We cannot see how pins are soldering on to those pads on the board, but those we can. And that's why we pre-apply solder onto the pads. We heat up the board and we reflow everything down in place. And that's a brand new connector.
Okay, so it's time to heat up. they're liquefied and if it liquefied from the outside it also means that it liquefied from the inside so all those pins should be making a good connection let's double check solid solid very good this one is there's no pad here and there's no pad here now we have to solder the back. Okay, so the port is soldered on nicely. Nice, shiny joints. Okay, so I'm tempted to just plug a battery in and see if it charges. So what I'm going to do is plug the battery here. We need the battery to be plugged in. And that's all I need. Battery is plugged in right now. And plug the cable. We have zero amps being drawn by the meter. So the console is not taking any charge and it's stuck at five volts. I'm gonna try our battery just to eliminate the fact that it could be a battery issue. Why did I have the feeling that this was not going to work? Okay, so I have another battery here and still zero amps being drawn by the board. Zero amps being drawn, so we have a problem. We have a problem on the board. A problem that's not related to the USB-C port. So we fixed one thing and now we have to troubleshoot and see what else is wrong with the board. I knew it was not going to be that easy. So let's continue. I think what I'm going to do is reflow this chip. I'm going to assume the chip is good. We're going to reflow it. Okay, joints look a lot better. And let's go up here. We're gonna reflow this one as well. Very nice. We're going to reflow this one. This could have been something that I would have fixed in 15, 20 minutes. And now we may not be able to get it fixed. We're going to have to go over this one more time, but let me just get rid of the axis. Maybe the chip was not making a good connection with the board, and that's why we have all the axis solder on the edges.
Okay, so the chip looks perfect. I just want to press down on it some more. Okay, we can clean up later. Let's go ahead and test. Same problem. Zero amps being drawn. Zero amps. So unfortunately it's a no fix, the console is still drawing zero amps, there's a limit on what we can do on this console. Customer or the person who worked on it, they changed everything on the board. So the board was exposed to a lot of heat from a lot of different angles. Uh, what I did off camera also is I soldered another charging IC and another power IC and uh, we were not able to get this to work. So there's a limit on what we can do on this console and there's a limit on how much time we want to spend on this console. So knowing that we tried our best, we did everything that we could, we're going to call it off and send this back to the customer. We're going to charge the customer a repair attempt fee. And that's it. Time to go home. I hope you enjoyed the video, even though it's a no fix. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And we'll do something else in the next video.